Hello, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you are. It's um, a lovely time to be celebrating the 100 years of Rotary in Africa. And today we're going to discuss on water and sanitation. And I have two very vast gentlemen who have uh, played great roles in Africa, not just in terms of water and sanitation, but in terms of Rotary and the work we have to do for service. First and foremost, I'm introducing Dr. Anthony Totten, who is, a celebra who is a celebrated environmental advisor, speaker, and author, and has made great significant contributions to water resource management in South Africa. Anthony is committed to environmental advocacy because he believes that we are reaching limits to our current developmental approaches and will be forced to make changes in the near future, whether we like it or not. Anthony, you're welcome to this session. Thank you, thank you very much. Good to be with you. Thank you. Also with us um, is uh, past district governor, Joe Otin. Uh, Joe Otin is a digital advertising specialist and media research analyst with three decades of experience. He is the CEO of The Collective, a digital advertising agency and chairman of the Advertising Standards Board of Kenya. Joe, you're welcome to this session. Thank you so much, uh, and it's really good to be here. Okay, um, before we delve into the wash topic, how do you feel knowing that Rotary is 100 years in Africa? Joe, you take the first shot. Well, it's, uh, you know, it is so, uh, so proud, such a proud moment. Uh, to be part of this really large organization that is having tremendous impact across the continent. And, um, you, know, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Africa is one of those regions that benefits tremendously from Rotary's presence. Um, I see the projects that we have in our district, and, um, you know, and I, I, I hear about the, uh, the Zone Institutes, I hear about the projects that are taking place uh, all over the continent. Uh, so it's a really proud moment, and I see another 100 years of uh, tremendous work and tremendous fellowship. Oh, excellent, excellent. So, Tony, how do you want to share this nice moment with Rotarians celebrating 100 years in Africa? Well, I think, uh, I think it's also it's a very important moment. Uh, Rotary is a hugely important organization. It's got the ability to make a very, very big impact at grassroots level. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a very privileged to be involved in this. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I, I, I'm a bit of a philosopher as well as a scientist. And, and um, as a philosopher, when I was, a, I was a small boy growing up in the Kalahari, I realized that as an individual, I'm quite insignificant, but I'm not irrelevant. So at the age of five, I was pondering the difference between significance and relevance. And I realized that as an individual, I'm as significant as, as one of the Vilibias crossing the Maasai Mara. I'm just another one of the Vilibias, but I'm not irrelevant. And my relevance is derived from being part of a greater whole. And part of that greater whole, I think that is something like the Rotary, where the individual's relevance can be amplified up to become part of a greater whole. So that is that speaks very much to, to my, to my uh, intellectual DNA, if you like. Oh, great. And Tony, I think what you've said, your philosophy uh, just rhymes with our mission in Rotary which we say is together we see a world where people unite to take action to create lasting change across the goal in our communities and in ourselves. Our discussion today centers on an integrated approach to water, sanitation, and hygiene. Now, from the work you have done in Africa so far, why do you think providing clean water and sanitation to every household is necessary? Are you asking me that question? Yes, Tony. Okay. Tony, please, okay. you can start off. Right. Okay, well, I think, uh, I think water is a, is a seductively simple to topic, but it's extremely complicated once you get into it. So at many, many different levels, uh, I refer to water as, a, as, as almost as an onion, the, with a, the, the different layers of the onion, the different rings of the onion. As you get into it, you've got another layer and yet another layer. So at one layer, water is is really uh, the foundation of all biological life. That is why when NASA is currently uh, with its rover on, on Mars and it's looking for water to see if there's any biological life on that planet. 
So because water is the, uh, is, is, is the foundation of all biological life as we know it, it is, it is everywhere. And because it's everywhere, it's managed by everybody and therefore no one's ever responsible for it. And that is part of the problem of water. Water is everywhere. We are made, we are literally water. And uh, there's a lot of interesting work that's been done about, about water and water has a memory, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole at this point in time. But at, at another layer, water is, 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 is the foundation of good health and, and good prosperity. If you speak to the people of, of Botswana, they, when, they, when they greet you, uh, they, they say, Pula, Pula. And, and, and when they wish you Pula, it is the abundance that comes with good rain. It's the happiness. It's the abundance. The currency in Botswana is called the Pula. So, so you know, they're, they're, this speaks to this deep-seated cultural system in, in Africa where water equals prosperity and well-being and health and happiness and, and, and all of the abundance that any reasonable person has, has, has a legitimate right to expect. So uh, we then get to another level now, and that is about the responsibility of water service provision. Who is responsible for it? How do we hold them accountable? How do we, how do we modernize the water sector? And then, of course, we get down to the other very, very awkward fact that the reality is that at, at, at planetary level, human population growth has outstripped the supply of fresh, clean water. Now we get into a completely different debate now because we haven't actually run out of water. We've only run out of the 2% of the total volume of water we have on the planet that is fresh and safe to drink. The other 98% is tied up in ice flows and, and mountains and, uh, and in the ocean and in groundwater. That's another story. Okay, But only the 2% that, that's available is fresh water. We've reached the limit of that. And so now we have to start reframing that, that problem. And this starts becoming a, 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 an interesting cultural uh, dialogue because there are a whole lot of different things that come into that particular space. So I'll, I'll leave it there as an introduction. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Tony. And, um, Joe, you, you have been a governor. You have um, sat over um, countries that belong to your district, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, Southern Sudan. Um, I don't know whether you have the equivalent of Pula in these countries, but from your experience as a governor, what do you think the, the greatest challenges have been to using the resources that Rotary provides to help provide portable and clean waters in our communities well you know um i have to agree with tony that um you know we water is scarce uh, but then the other thing about it is that we also have um, a lot of our freshwater sources uh, are getting polluted and uh, we're seeing such a um, you know such a um, you know a huge hit um on our rivers especially those rivers that are passing through the farming uh farming communities that are passing through industrial areas um, as well as part, passing through cities, uh, you know, highly developed cities. And um, even though we have these, um, you know, very well um, meaning and perhaps well developed um, agencies that are supposed to be taking care of uh, and regulating the pollution or, um, you know, cutting back on, on pollution, we're still seeing that um, the situation is getting worse over the years. So, um, so you know, with, the, with this kind of, um, with this kind of uh, situation, uh, you generally find that a lot of people do not have um, fresh, clean water, uh, you know, and then you start to see uh, more people filling in the hospitals, um, you know, spending the children rather than going into class, uh, spending more time in, uh, you know, hospital beds and in hospital rooms. So we do have a big, big problem that we need to solve. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. And um, just taking it a little bit from there. Now, having been a governor and seeing those needs, uh, maybe you can give us pointers to some of the projects that you carried out as a governor in that area that helped to provide them um, water, sanitation, and hygiene to not just Rotarians, but the peoples in the countries that you looked after. Well, you know, I mean, let me talk about the one that was the most significant. Um, and this was in uh, Debra Brahain in uh, Addis Ababa, um, or in, in Ethiopia, just uh, north of uh, Addis Ababa. And um, it's a really, uh, um, you know, huge project. The largest project I think we have in our district, $800,000 uh, 
um, you know, went into um, went into this project. And um, you know, what we're seeing is that um, you know, the Rotary and the World Vision came together to make sure that they provided water for thirty six thousand students. Now these kids are able to spend now uh, spend their time in school, um, you know, because they're getting clean water, fresh water. Um, they're spending more time in class than spending time in the already stretched uh, medical facilities because now they have access to clean water. And um, and it's those kind of projects that um, you know I think motivate Rotarians. That um, when you get when you work on large projects that are going to have a huge impact across um, you know a large cross section of society, then you you really want to get involved. And um, and so we are seeing um, you know our clubs building these ablution blocks that are providing uh, that are able to provide water and sanitation to the to the schools. Um, you know they are also able to provide um, water and sanitation to the communities around them, by and making a small income from it. So those that's that's I'd like to give it, I'd like to leave it at that example for now, uh, and maybe I'll talk get a chance to talk about a few others as we go along. Thank you. Oh, oh, great, Joe. Thanks so much. And um, congratulations on that project. Now, now, Tony, as an environmental scientist, um, you've had the opportunities to work with governments at various roles. And um, for us in Africa, what do you think our governments should be putting as their priorities? And um, how should they be going out about bringing out those policies that can help their populations? to have good water and hygiene resources? Yes, I've worked with many governments, and of course governments are extremely important to the daily well-being of, of, of millions and millions of citizens. In fact, billions of citizens are dependent every single day on responsive and, uh, and, 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 and adequate government. Unfortunately, we don't always get responsive and adequate government. So this is a, it's a difficult thing sometimes because uh, what uh, people deserve and what the uh, human rights uh, expectations are is not always what they get, but we're living in a in a very very disjointed world at the moment. And I, I would like to say the f the first thing I'd like to say is that in general we have a highly technically competent water sector globally. The water sector, wherever you go, anywhere in the world, that's it's populated by a certain kind of person, and they tend to be people that that want to solve problems. They tend to be people that have got a natural desire to support. Uh, something bigger than themselves. It's just it's something that goes with the territory. They they get they derive pleasure out of out of deriving services on which other people can flourish. So that's that's the the first thing. But the, the second thing that we have is that the water sector globally is extremely conservative. So so they they tend to be risk averse and they tend not to want to take. Uh, uh, to, to, to think out of the box or do things that are that are different than unusual. And now, of course, this is a very interesting thing from a, a marketing or advertising perspective because we've got to start changing behavior. And I think the behavioral change has been thrust upon us by the COVID-19 global pandemic because this nobody's welcomed this, but it's upon us and, and everyone is affected in some way or other. So I'm going to refer to the background that I've got behind my face, my head at the moment now. That little image there, I'm going to get out of the way a little bit. I'm going to explain what that image is there. But that okay. is an image that was recently published in a, an internationally acclaimed scientific journal. And that is a tiny droplet of moisture coming, an aerosol coming out of a person's mouth when speaking. And you can see the tiniest of droplets. And you see all those yellow things. Those are all the viruses clinging to that yellow droplet. So this is a graphic, powerful image that explains how, how pathogens move. And, of course, the opportunity we now have from a WASH perspective is really about how to introduce safe and sound pathogen management processes into the households of everybody so that we can all mitigate the risk that we all live under. But it's not only from coronavirus. It's the risk that we live under from all pathogens. If you look at how many how many hundreds of those little little yellow things are, are are clinging to the tiniest droplet, that droplet is the size of a pinhead. So just think of we're living in a world of pathogens. We are surround, we are an ecosystem that carries millions, if not billions, of of living creatures, living things that live on us. Okay? We are walking ecosystems. 
So once we've got to start understanding that, when we move to a situation now where, where we have run out of our readily available freshwater supplies, that's one very important aspect. The second aspect is we've run to the kind of limit of where uh, uh, our ingenuity in terms of where current government conventional thinking can take us. We, 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 we tend to have an unimaginative policy approach uh, because of the conservative nature of the uh, of, of, of government. And this is where I think Rotary can play a very important role because they can become, the, let's say, the experimental ground or the little thing on the sideline where, where, where they can try, they can be encouraged to try out new things without direct risk to the government. But we That's have awesome. to do things dif- We have to do things differently. And we also have to, I think the, the other important thing is that we have to bring about a message of hope. Because in the current world where economies are grinding to halt, where unemployment is growing, uh, where, uh, where, where global trade is, is, is being fundamentally disrupted because of this virus, uh, there's a lot of bad, bad uh, things coming out of this. So we've got to use this thing, I think, to, uh, to, to, to embrace the needs to change and to encourage alternative thinking about how we can do things differently. And, and so, Joe, you you are also um, an advertising and marketing communication specialist. And listening to Tony has talked about the challenge of messaging, the challenge of communications, and passing the right messages about challenges in water supply and what we ought to do. Now, from your background, how do you think we can use the skills we have in marketing, communications, public image, advertising? How do, we, how do you think that our messaging should be, um, even as Rotarians and as non-Rotarians and people who are just concerned about the scarcity of fresh water supply? Yes, I think the, um, I mean, that is a, a really important question. And um, when, I, um, uh, when I was going around as a district governor, I spent um, a considerable amount of time visiting the projects uh, that our clubs had carried out. And, uh, and I said to any of the clubs that uh, when I visit, the, the most important thing um, or one of the key priorities would be to visit the projects. And um, the way I rewarded the clubs thereafter was that I put it on my social media. Um, I was able to put, um, you know, all these stories, every single project that I visit, I was able to put that on my social media. And it had two effects. First effect was that um, it showed people a lot of the water projects that we are carrying out, carrying out and showed non-Rotarians the, the kind of impact that Rotary was having. The second thing was that it gave the clubs a lot of pride. Uh, they were so happy to see their, their, their um, projects being promoted by the district governor. And I think that, um, you know, whenever we've, uh, I, I, I uh, post um, and, um, you know, or even write a blog or write an article around water projects, I tend to see the public uh, responding, you know, and responding about water and sanitation especially. I see the public responding extremely well. And people say, well, we'd like to be part of this because I think when you think about the big issues that we have in Africa, uh, you know, providing uh, water, clean water to communities and providing proper sanitation, um, you know, tends to be on top of that list. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. And um, Tony, I hope the door is closed right now. And um, (laughs) so... um, I'm just wondering, and you know, I'll, I also like to hear some of your personal stories uh, in the course of, um, you know, working on water and sanitation in Africa. Are there heart lifting moments you have had when you have gone to communities, um, giving them solutions? Are there things that we can use as takeaways from your practical experience in the field? Yes, that's a that's a great question. Uh, you know, I've got a I'm a 12th generation African, so I've got a great love for Africa. My uh, my my you know, 12 generations ago, 1652, my, my my original relative came out with a man called Jan van Riebeck that everyone today blames for everyone's troubles, uh, but nonetheless, he came out as a refugee from a from a from a war between the Catholics and the Protestants in, in Europe. So I'm the descendant of a refugee, but I'm but I'm but I'm an African and. Uh, I've always loved Africa, and one of the things I've loved about Africa is that there are 53 countries in Africa, but there's 63 rivers that cross the borders of of countries. So we've got more rivers that cross international borders in Africa than we have countries. 
And of those 63 rivers that cross international borders, 10% of them do not flow into the ocean. Now, this is, a, so there's six rivers. There's six rivers that do not flow into the ocean. And these are extremely important rivers because they very often flow into areas where there's endemic poverty and high levels of stress, but they provide an important uh, ecological uh, uh, baseline for, for society. One of the biggest, of course, is Chad, the, 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 the Chad River Basin, uh, where you get Lake Chad, uh, which is an inland draining basin. And the other one, the exotic one, of course, is, uh, is the Okavango. Uh, where, where uh, you know, 98% of the water uh, flowing in the Okavango, beautiful quality water, just simply evaporates in the Kalahari Desert. And there's, a, there, there, there's another one called the uh, Kuvalai in Zimbabwe that also, sorry, in, 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 in uh, Namibia, flowing from Angola into Namibia, that uh, forms the Atosha Pan that also uh, sustains that community. There are a couple of others. There's one in Kenya, um, and there, there, there are a few others. Uh, but they're all very, very important ones. So the important thing is that water is the one thing that unites us. And in fact, when SADC started growing as a regional grouping, the Southern African Development uh, Co Coordinating Conference changed over to become uh, the, the development community, the Southern African Development Community. The very first law that they adopted was the SADC Protocol on Shared Water Courses. And that became the foundation of integration in Southern Africa, much like in the European Union, the foundation for integration was in fact the joint management of iron and steel and coal. Coal, iron and steel, that was, that was the, the foundation of what eventually became the European Union. And so these are cooperative agreements. And that's the important point. If you, if you just look in, uh, in some of these uh, shared river uh, basin areas, if you take the, uh, the Okavango, for example, there's so many cultural similarities in the Okavango and, for example, in Zimbabwe, uh, the, uh, you know, the Nyami Nyami spirit. The Nyami Nyami spirit as a totem you find in, in all three of those countries. And, in fact, you, there are many localized communities that live along rivers that do not recognize international borders. Uh, their language crosses over the border. And these are localized communities. Now, there are hundreds of different languages spoken in some of these areas. I know of about 30 languages in one, in one river basin alone. So you know, these, are, these are the things that provide us the cultural richness uh, that makes Africa such a, a wonderful place. Okay. We've been having a nice conversation so far. Um, Joe is a past district governor from um, District 9212. And Tony is an environmental uh, specialist who has lived all his years in Africa, and African, he says he is. Just to make our closing points, and let me start with you, Joe. Um, moving ahead now, what do you think Rotary should be emphasizing on in its water and sanitation hygiene area of focus as we move on? And what can Rotary put in place to help Rotarians to go out and solve this issue of um, crisis in freshwater supply? Well, well, thank you for that question, and Ndikwe. Um, the first thing is that um, we've got to look at it from two perspectives. Uh, perspective number one is, um, you know, fighting the pollution, especially in our freshwater sources and our rivers. The second part is then being able to provide, um, you know, access to clean water for these communities that um, don't have that kind of access. And now, with the environment um, coming into an area of focus, uh, there will be opportunities for grants in that area. Um, so we can have an opportunity of cleaning up the rivers, um, you know, and, um, and our fresh water sources, so that there will be um, more water available, uh, more, um, you know, uh, disease-free and uh, fecal matter-free, you know, uh, water that will be available. But the second thing, in terms of um, uh, Rotary Clubs, I think that... Um, if our Rotary, Rotarians and most, most members in our Rotary clubs across this continent uh, were members of the WAS, uh, WASHRAG, that's the WASH um, Rotary Action Group, um, I think there's a lot of uh, wonderful information there about the kind of um, expertise that we need uh, the, to, to figure out what kind of projects that we, we need to run. But we have such a strength with all these um, 16 or um, eight, 18 districts that we have across uh, across the continent with 
37 or so thousand uh, Rotarians, that if we all got involved in water projects, um, you know, within our communities, um, digging those boreholes, uh, providing those ablution blocks, um, you know, and sometimes the biodigesters, I've seen the biodigesters di providing energy uh, for children's homes, you know, out of, um, out of this, um, you know, with sanitation facilities. I think that uh, we can have a real impact, um, you know, across this continent. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And it is the big impact that we're, we really want to see. So, um, Tony, just to close up your, your thoughts, what are those big opportunities you can see right now? Those areas of hope that you can see in terms of water, sanitation, and hygiene for Africa? I see... Um... Uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. That's my good, humble, professional opinion. We're living today in a, in the, in a, uh, a pandemic uh, crisis, and uh, this is going to raise uh, concerns about human health and the transmission of pathogens. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity to align all of those things through, uh, through Rotary and just focus on the health-related aspects, not only of coronavirus, but of all your, your, your human uh, pathogens. Uh, where I come from here in, in KwaZulu-Natal in, in South Africa, we've got a very high level of, uh, of HIV in the area, and therefore a lot of TB, and, uh, and, and uh, also getting hepatitis now, hepatitis A, which is a waterborne, a waterborne form of hepatitis, and that is coming back through wastewater management that is being done in, incorrectly. It's coming back through septic tanks that are flowing back into rivers or people are using the water to... Uh, to uh, uh, irrigate their crops. So the second aspect, I think, would be on behavioral change, but also education. Education that water is the one resource that is infinitely renewable. It's not like oil. It's not like coal. It's not like gold. It's an infinitely renewable resource. Therefore, my advice to Rotary would be to start thinking very serious about promoting the custodial role. The, the, the notion of custodianship over this renewable resource. Because if we respect water and if we respect the natural setting in which it's found, it will keep on coming back and we will get that abundance, that pool, that abundance that, 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 that people that live in deserts refer to uh, when, when, when it happens to rain upon them. Awesome, awesome. And um, with that charge to Rotarians in Africa and all over the world to be custodians of water and help in the renewal of water, it will be a good place to leave our discussion on an integrated approach to water, sanitation, and hygiene. Our discussants have been past district governor Joe Otin, who is the immediate past district governor of Rotary International District 9212 is also our Rotary International representative to the UN on environment and also um, a marketing communications specialist. So, Joe, thank you for coming. It was and, then, and it was great to share these um, ideas with the Rotarians today. Thank you so much. We have also had with us Dr. Anthony Totten an environmentalist and a scientist who has lived all his years in Africa and has shared his enormous enthusiasm and passion for water renewal. Tony, it's been nice talking with you. Thank you very much. I wish you very well in your, in your endeavors. Thank you. And on behalf of all of us, we also want to thank District Governor Anne-Marie, whose district is celebrating 100 years of Rotary in Africa. Thank you, Anne-Marie, for inviting us to be part of this celebration. We wish Africa and all Rotarians well. Thank you and bye-bye.